Hello and welcome to this week's bonus episode of Planet Critical, the podcast for a world in crisis. My guest this week was Richard Heinberg, who's a senior fellow at the Post Carbon Institute. And we discussed energy, we discussed growth, economy, uh, democracy. But the thing that I want to touch on in this bonus episode is social cohesion. It's what Rich has been working on recently, um, identifying how Western states are unable to meet the grueling demands of climate change, unable to work together, unable to collaborate essentially to um, avoid collapse, to create the future that we need and create the processes that we need to get there. I think this is such an interesting conversation because it reframes the narrative of climate change rather than it being this sort of impending natural or ecological disaster, anthropogenic disaster, but based in ecology nonetheless. It highlights that the climate emergency is a failure of social collaboration. Extractive capitalism is one of the major driving forces in the climate crisis and by extension inequality. Richard also points out that increasing economic inequality also impacts social cohesion. It creates more divisions uh, between citizens. It makes them unable to come together to focus on in this day and age an existential threat and rather focus on perceived enemy groups that populist leaders narrativize. This dialogue around social cohesion really gets to the root of the problem, which um, David Orr also discusses um, a few episodes back. Uh, his episode was Save Democracy to Save the Planet, essentially how the climate crisis is an emblem of citizenship failure on our part, failure to look after our home, failure to look after one another. And I think what is crucial about having these kinds of conversations is it highlights that even if uh, we arrive in some techno-optimistic future uh, whereby somebody somewhere invents some carbon capture machine that manages to suck the CO2 out of the atmosphere whilst another genius on another part of the planet manages to figure out cooling and blah, 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 blah. Even if we manage to do that, even if we manage to create the tools that we need to put the brakes on our own self-destruction and ecological destruction, do we even have the adequate social cohesion, the adequate sense of collaboration and community to implement those solutions. Think about that. Even if technological solution was available to us, would we have the requisite community numbers attitude to either vote in the person that suggests or has access to the solution? Or as Richard points out, do we have the requisite collaborative attitude to reduce our own emissions and reduce our pollution and reduce our consumption in the way that we need to? Again, it's so interesting because it stops this being a conversation about individuals and it makes it a conversation around community because it is easier to do things as part of a community. It does provide people with purpose. Look at the world wars. We discussed this a lot during the episode, but look how nations and peoples come together during a world war and find a great sense of, of purpose amongst the destruction that enables them to do previously inconceivable acts of selflessness. We cannot fight climate change single-handedly. We cannot expect the group that currently has access to the, you know, let's call them what they are, the oligarchs. We cannot expect the oligarchs to change the current system. This atomization of society even into individuals is part of the problem. We need to have a community response to a community problem. And the spiritual people in this debate would argue that community also means the entire biosphere, the planet itself, every living being. You know, given the amount of disinformation campaigns that are out there in the world, I wonder if this impetus on individualism to solve the climate crisis is a deliberate disinformation campaign. We have seen um, how airlines and fossil fuel heavy industries like to offset the responsibility onto consumers. So you can track your own emissions, you can track your own CO2 carbon footprint, blah, 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 blah. But I mean, it's a terrible, terrible weight of responsibility on a single human being. Change my behavior to save the planet. Whereas it's not too much to ask 
of a nation, of a people, of every human being together. And when we ask it of every human being together, and they can do it together, then it becomes possible, plausible, realistic. Then we can take action. Oligarchic capitalism derives its power from creating precarious, unsafe situations and circumstances for citizens. It derives its power from reducing communities to individuals. I think I've gone on about this in the past, but that's why strike action doesn't work in these countries that are run by essentially oligarchs or elites like the UK, like the USA. Because life is so precarious and unstable for so many people that if somebody wants to strike because they have a vision for a better future, which ultimately demands a certain level of mental stability and mental security to have the possibility of envisioning something better, then another person is in a situation so much worse off that they will happily fill the shoes and take the job of the person who dreams of something better. That's what precarity is. That's why it's so successful at undermining and disempowering entire populations. Isabel Laurie has a fantastic book on this called State of Insecurity. I would highly recommend you go and read it. She takes Foucault's argument of power and just extrapolates it and maps it onto the modern state. I think this is a very interesting discussion. Number one, would we have the communal wherewithal to choose the right course of action, even if it were available to us? And arguably, evidence says no. Number two, is the individualization of responsibility a deliberate disinformation or disempowerment campaign? And therefore, how can we change the conversation to make it collective, universal, and tapping into that sense of purpose and community that has seen mankind traverse tragedy throughout history? We exported globalization and it just created increasing inequalities around the world. Because of globalization, the climate crisis is a problem that must be solved globally together, but perhaps it could also bring the world together. Rather than exporting or offsetting our emissions and pollution and waste and globalism, perhaps we could import strategy, resilience, universalism. TBC. Thank you everyone for watching. Remember to check out the episode with Richard. Link is in the description box below. If you're new here, remember to subscribe to this channel. And if you're a longtime listener of Planet Critical, support the podcast on Patreon. The link is also in the description box below. And a big thank you to the Planet Critical community who is supporting the podcast. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope this was valuable and I will see you next week.